Hi everyone, this is Teresa Cunha, Director of Policy and Leadership Programs here at the National Hispanic Leadership Agenda in Washington, D.C., a coalition of 40 prominent national Latino organizations focused on public policy impacting the Latino community, as well as creating a pipeline for Latinos as decision makers. I'm here to introduce Congresswoman Norma Torres, who was elected in 2014 to represent California's 35th Congressional District in Southern California. She previously served as state senator, assembly member, and as mayor and council member in the city of Pomona. Throughout her career in elected office, Norma Torres has worked to make government more responsive to the needs of Inland Empire residents. And with that, welcome, Congresswoman. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here with you. So, so we'll get straight to it. Um, we're trying to get more Latinas to run for office. And we think it's important to share the story, story, successful stories of Latinas who got there. Could you tell me a little bit about how you first got involved in public service? Absolutely. I think um, it's uh, important to recognize that um, we don't win um, uh, seats by simply putting our name on the ballot that um, it takes a lot of work um, in the community and it takes uh, gaining the trust of our community uh, before we actually you know put our names on the ballot and and decide to run um, for me I started organizing um, you know my uh, small council district of uh, at that time it was 32,000 people and I started working uh, within Neighborhood Watch and mobilizing my community four years before I actually put my name on the ballot. Fantastic. And so what was that aha moment? Was it something that said there is a lack of something in my community and it's up to me to, to help solve it? Uh, right, um, which was the reason why I got involved in the community to begin with. You know, there was a lack of representation. Uh, we had a um, community representative that had been elected uh, to office for uh, 12 or 13 years, and um, he was sort of out of touch with the community. Uh, like many other uh, women and many other Latinas, um, running for what I wanted to do and it's not the reason why I got elect uh, what I got involved in the first place um, I drew frankly I drew short straws and um, it was a community that pushed me uh, to run initially I said well I'll put my name on the ballot but I'm really not interested in doing this job I'm very busy raising you know my sons and working full-time and I don't have time to do this um, but failing to recognize that I was already doing a lot of the work uh, to begin with. Well, that's fantastic and I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of Latinas that are in the same position. What kind of preparation did you make in order to make that, that decision um, and once you launched, what helped you um, be successful in your campaign? Uh, what helped me was, um, like I said, I was already very involved in the community. Um, I lived in the community. I was raising a family. I was a homeowner in the community. I didn't just move into a community to run for office. Um, I, you know, I was a part of uh, of the pulse of what was happening in my community. Um, I uh, ended up going door to door and talking to people, and it was talking to my neighbors that really inspired me um, to um, take this election serious and um, and to run not just to teach a lesson to the elected official that wasn't representing the community but actually you know to run to win and uh, and bring about the change that my community uh, desperately needed and uh, we did that but like I said I, I've already had the trust of um, a good portion of, of the residents of the voters um, of the district in which I was running in. Fantastic. And would you say that there's any difference uh, between your strategy when you ran locally, um, state, and now federally? Absolutely. Uh, first time running um, for office, taking on you know an incumbent that was loved in the community was not easy. Um, I couldn't. Um, 
uh, waste my time in, 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 you know, looking or seeking out endorsements because I knew I wasn't going to get them. Um, you know, that person was very well positioned in the community. So I was really running on my name, on the work that I had um, already proven um, that I could do in the community. And uh, I, I think that that's what, that was the difference uh, between, you know, that um, elected official and myself. Running for, um, the first time I ran for state office in 2008, I was very involved um, at the national level uh, with the Obama campaign. And um, as much as I was trying, you know, to work full time and be a mom and run my own campaign, I was more. Um, I was paying more attention, unfortunately, uh, to uh, to the national um, campaign than my own campaign. But you know, I won, um, and I I won by you know big numbers. So it it was a big big difference, though. And what advice would you give to any young Latina who is considering um, in getting engaged in public service? I, the advice that I would give is get to know your community. Uh, get you know, make sure that um, the people that you are going to represent understand you know you and and know you for one. Um, get involved uh, whether it's in a nonprofit organization. Um, you don't necessarily need a title to make change in the community, right? I mean, that's how I started. I didn't have a title other than a resident of this community. Um, but you need to have the courage to stand up and um, to be the voice uh, on, on issues that you know need to be addressed. And people need to see that, one, you will have the courage to stand up for them, and two, that you know when the time comes to speak out for, um, for your constituents, that you will do that. Uh, what I do, the advice that I have is that they hold women, uh, the voters hold women um, uh, to a higher accountability than they do men. And they expect us to do so much more than they do uh, with men. So we have to be smarter. We have to, you know, outwork them. And uh, we have to do so much more than they do. And that's a great transition to my next question. You're eight months in. Um, as a member of Congress, one of nine Latinas serving currently. What's your experience been like so far? Uh, the experience um, has been wonderful. Um, you know, being a, a, a member of the House uh, is it's very, very hard um, job. Uh, there is a lot of preparation, you know, for hearings, uh, you know, for uh, legislation that is coming before us. I, I really thought I was in a really good spot with, you know, all of uh, the experience that I had at the local level and uh, the state uh, legislature. But, you know, I found Congress to be a little bit more challenging. Um, in particular to the issues that we're dealing with right now because we're very, very partisan. Um, it, it um, you know, my observations have been that we, uh, Congress has sort of forgotten, you know, about um, the people that they represent and, and they're sort of, you know, checked out of the nonpartisan issues that uh, make our community, you know, um, a much better place uh, to live in. Is there any final thoughts, any last pieces of, of parting advice that would you like to give to us? Right. Um, don't wait for somebody to ask you, you know, to run for office. Um, people are going to tell you a thousand reasons why you can't run and, and why you're not going to win. And um, it, it takes a lot of courage, I know. Um, if you're not getting the endorsements that you need and you're not raising the money that you need, um, you know, it's okay. I, I didn't, you know, raise the money that I needed to raise in order to win that very first campaign. But I was committed. I had people in my community that were committed, um, you know, to my platform. Uh, and they helped me go door to door. You can't beat that ground um, campaign. So um, be courageous. Uh, my only regret is that uh, when I left the state senate, I was the last Latina to serve in the state senate. So we have a lot of work to do um, here in California uh, in the legislature too. Fantastic. Well. Here, uh, myself and the National Hispanic Leadership Agenda looks forward to working with you and collaborating in ways that we can help change the wave and start seeing more Latinas in elected office. And with that, I'm going to wrap up.
And on behalf, I want to thank you again, uh, and greetings to everyone in California and those that are listening and watching our video. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much.